I figured at least you would take the hand. Uh, help me remember to tell you what verse is on. I'm always bad about doing something I've never seen before. Good morning. Great, great minds in the world. Yeah. What? Well, you and who? I said, over here, you're the one over there doing all the clapping. I think he's saying, where's the other one? Yeah. First, the great mind did. I thought he was talking about him and somebody else. Yeah. Would you read that now? I'm trying. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be here today. Amen. Uh, there will be no PM services this evening. Office will be closed Tuesday the 4th, so everybody stay home this evening. And have fun with your family and get ready for the fourth. Make sure you come out and sweat and watch fireworks on the fourth. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Speaking of which, Faith, Family, and Freedom Fireworks. Oh, sorry. Viewing is on X Street parking lot on July 4th from 7.30 to 10. Kona Ice will be available for purchase. I would imagine they're going to sell a whole lot of it. More than likely. Are we not having five dollars on fourth of July? Linda, we quit, we quit we're doing, doing that about four years ago. Two, two, three, fourth of July. <laughs> not, not. That, I'm sorry you had to find out that way. But. <laughs> Men's uh, fellowship breakfast is Wednesday, July the fifth, at six thirty from six thirty to eight in the fellowship hall. We don't know yet what we're having. We're having a breakfast. We have. I sent a text message. Pray for our nation service is Wednesday, July the fifth, at six thirty in the fellowship hall. The uh, students left this morning to go to camp, and on the Sunday, July the 9th, will be their testimony service. So, and that'll be there in the, the morning service in the in the sanctuary. Jacob said he had 41. Now I can't remember. I think he I think he said 41 kids. Yeah. Wow. And 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 only 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 four counselors. Two of two two of them are suspect. <laughs> and that would be Jacob and Allen. <laughs> yeah. And I and I said I said so you got forty one. He goes yeah, but I only promised to bring about thirty nine of them back. <laughs> I said I don't want to know which which three. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know what your choices are. <laughs> and I hope I don't have to drive up there. <laughs> Listen, they they were moaning and groaning this morning, and me and Randy were commiserating about all the years that we did that. And I mean, we drove van, vans. And the trip wasn't a two or three hour trip. It was 21 hours one way. One way. I'm sorry. I digress. Great I was enjoying memories. the story. Great memories. Yeah. Uh, Faith in the Public Square series will be starting Sunday, July the 9th, and run through August the 13th. Uh, pizza will be provided on the first one to kick off the series. Yay. <laughs> what? Pizza will be provided on the first I night. think we ought to advocate for Pizza Hut. Uh, well, good one for that one. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Wedding shower on. You have to do that for a while. You Go ahead. Me. <laughs> Wedding shower <laughs> Honoring Phelan Ruby and Tim Paul Rawls will be on Saturday, July the 15th at 11 o'clock in the gym. Uh, if you're interested in getting them something for that, they're registered at the knot, T H E K N O T dot com. In the gym? In the gym. Hmm. Equip Conference is Saturday, August the 5th from 8. See, that just don't make sense. Do what? From 8 to 12 to 3. If you want to, you know, if you if you're going to sign up to go to Equip, it's going to be at Sagemont Church. You can scan the registration code in the in the bulletin. It's a free training. 
And it's aimed at, at, for those that serve in the church. So if you're currently serving in the church or you plan on wanting to serve in the church, you, well, you probably should go and look at this and, and see about signing up. Uh, I think, Billy, are we taking the bus? Yes. So the bus... When you sign up, it asks you, do you want to ride the bus? Okay. And it's 8 to 3, just FYI. Huh? It is 8 to 3. I think they have a lunch around 12 o'clock. Okay, maybe that's what the 12 o'clock means. Uh, so anyway, if you're, if you're interested, the, you need to sign up for that. And like I say, the barcode's in the bulletin. Back to school, promotion sun, and promotion Sunday service is Sunday morning, August the 13th. Singspiration. If you want to sing, tune up your pipes and get with Pastor Kaler. That will be Sunday, August the 20th at 6 p.m. Let him know so he can get you set up. And then Mark Lowry Hometown Weekend is October 13th and 14th. Uh, go to marklowry.com to register for that. There's a special code for Central, uh, people from Central, and it's basically Central all in caps letters if you want to get tickets for that. That's it. Is that all you got? Um, we um, Drusilla had a surgery on her hip. Everything went well. Uh, I just don't understand these days and times. They they managed to keep her. Well, I can understand it. They managed to keep her one night. I'm trying to figure out how you do a hip surgery. You only stay in the hospital one night. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the only reason she stayed the one night was because they did the surgery late. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the so the other part of that is is it, it, it never mind. I mean Drusilla Drusilla might be a little bit hard headed. Maybe maybe not a little bit. <laughs> it, anyway, calling the kettle black. Uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> Drusilla's home doing fine, um, along with the other two. So she's at Charlotte's house, which I was there at least one time. Yeah, and it's Charlotte and Betty and Drew. Uh, Billy, for whatever reason, seems to go every day. Just for um, coffee, not to help. Just for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that just brings in that. Just never mind. <laughs> Look, if if you decide that you want to bring a meal over there to them, uh, at some point in time, the other two, I know they can cook. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I, I would say anybody but me, uh, when I offered to bring one over, I got a, I, I was like, it was like they went to Whataburger. They, it's like, hey, I'm going to bring such, no, we, this is what we want. <laughs> and, and, we, and when you get that, we want this and this to go with it and get a couple extra of them. You know, I'm like, whatever, well, no I, problem. <laughs> I text Charlotte the day that Drew got home and I said, Charlotte, Drew, I'm going to pick, fix y'all something to eat. <laughs> what would be a good time? What would be a good time to bring it over? And Charlotte's reply back was, "Well, what about Betty?" And I'm like, "What about her?" I looked at Joanne and went, "Well, I guess Betty's over there." Anyway, you had to be there, okay? You just had to be there. Um, Rusty, no dates yet. No dates yet, but I do have a prayer request for Ben. I uh, do have a date on his. He's going to be having surgery on August 10th. On who? Drake. Okay. okay. Is so it for it? surgery? Yeah. Uh, but, well, they're going to go into his back and put a couple of nerves going down his left leg. And they're going to operate on his lower leg to stretch the tendon. And then they're going to start cutting bones in his foot. To restructure his foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, he's, he's got pretty, yeah. I, I'm scared to death. My doctor's going to try to schedule me about the same time. Yeah. He may have to wait if he does. Becky, you've got, you're, you've got appointments set up, right? July 17th, yeah. radiation. radiation. Where are you going to have that at? I have no idea. I don't even know this person. Well, there you go. <laughs> He's somewhere down in the, off the highway three. Ask questions. Ask, yeah. ask questions. Uh, Jody, my daughter, 
I had to have emergency hernia surgery the other day. She's like, mm -hmm. she's, <laughs> poor Joanne. We've had an infirmary at our house for the past two weeks, so. Two but, weeks. Yeah, me. And then two her. months, maybe. Yeah, well, that's true. But anyway, she's doing good. It just came up all, I mean, literally, she went to the doctor. He did a, a scan and called her in the next day and said, you need to have surgery now. And scheduled it the next day. So he took a bunch of fluid out, repaired the hernia, and she seems to be doing well so far. So basically, Joanne took food to the three um, amigos. <laughs> three amigos. Amiga. I like that. Three amigos, she's, she's so she could get a break. Yes. <laughs> she's going. She's Joanne's probably going to. When we get well, she's probably going to leave just to get waving, away from us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, she says precious is the death of his saint in his life. He also said, says that an elder, that he talked about the elder, that he was worthy of double honor. Mm. Two weeks ago, such a man died. Mm. And we said goodbye to him Thursday. And that was Bill Dorsey's book, Dorsey Brothers Concrete. Mm. The only reason I want to mention this is this. He was my first Bible teacher when I was 15 years. This is on him. What's happened to me? He enriched so many people's lives, mentored them, cared for them, gave for them. It's not just a handful of people, literally thousands of people. This man lived his 80 something years serving people, and God blessed him greatly for it. But what God gave him, he gave to others. <clears throat> and I can say to pray for his family their family is going to be fine because of who Bill was his. <clears throat> but this should be a challenge, a charge an encouragement to every one of us to be that kind of mentor that kind of disciple that kind of giver that kind of man that honors Christ the way Bill Dorsey did so if, if I ask you to pray, I pray for that because the Lord knows we need those kind of men and women today. Because I would like when I go that somebody says something similar about me that we should all do and feel that way. <coughs> pray for us. Our God and our Father, we just come to you this morning just thanking you for the precious blessings of life that you bestow upon us, Father. Not only for the privilege of being here in this class, this morning in this church, your church, Father, to hear your word and fellowship uh, with your people, Father. But Lord, just the people you bring into our lives, Father. People that make our lives so much richer that you use them through the power of the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and our minds, to guide us, to disciple us, to mentor us, to be the people that you desire us to be. 
Now, Father, I pray for these prayer requests today, this family who's lost this loved one. I pray for Priscilla. Lord, that you continue to heal her body. Father, Lord, just work in all these prayer requests. Lord, that you are honored and glorified. And bless everything that happens this morning in these, on this campus, Father, that it honors and glorifies you. For it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're the we're in Acts, uh, three different three different locations in Acts, and it's talking about Paul. Uh, so the first the first scriptures that they give us in our lesson was these. It's in Acts uh, nine, Acts nine twenty six through twenty nine, and uh, let me read Acts nine twenty six through twenty nine. And when Saul or Paul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him into the apostles, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of, the name of Jesus. And he, was, and he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem, and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and, dis, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Okay, so as, as usual... Um, Paul, Paul, Saul is where he's at at this point in time of the happenings we've heard so much about. He meets, he meets Jesus as a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus face-to-face, -face, I believe, on the road to Damascus. There he's converted, there he's changed. Um, and, from, and, and at that moment in time, his next moves are to go and he preaches Okay, he preaches a sermon. Paul is a Roman citizen. Um, Very well educated. I mean, extremely highly educated, okay? Um, he's doing this. The hard thing about this, and, and the lesson points it out, so he preaches, in, he preaches I, I, I guess, in Damascus. I'm trying to remember my thoughts on that. But at any rate, once he does that, it just plainly says... And they were they were they went about to try to slay him. So one thing the lesson pointed out today that I thought was really, really good. Paul left the stoning of Stephen to go get other Christians to either put him in jail, to put him in to, 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 to kill him. And he was seeking papers to go do that. Once he had him, he headed out. So the very man that was leading the, uh, that condoned, that condoned the stoning of Stephen and that was leading the charge to get the rest of them, he gets stopped in his tracks. And so, the, so, every, so God just literally shifts gears with him. His trip to Damascus to slay other Christians turns in a trip to convert other people to Christ. So God does. God takes him and turns him completely around. So he goes from being the one doing the slaying to the one to be slain, if that makes sense. So let's go that way. But everywhere he was going, the the hard the hard part about on on this is I did a study and and Ron knows I talked to Ron about it a lot. I did a study about Paul and I just I just did it because I got fascinated by it. And uh, what we don't pick up in this in this in this story, the, the author tells. If you read the lesson, um, there's about ten years trans, transpire right here. Okay, there's some time it, from the time he gets to where we're talking about right now to where we're going to be talking about in a minute. It's somewhere around twenty years, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on. So we talk a lot about. Um, Acts, it's Acts 9, 1 through 8, his conversion on the road to Damascus. We talked about that. Um, when we talked about Samuel the other day, Samuel really, he knew, that he, he understood the voice, but he really didn't know who was talking to him until Eli said, go back, God's speaking to you. And we talked about this the other day. When, when Paul gets struck down on that road to Damascus, there's no question about who he's talking about. 
Brad said it, highly educated. He knows the, the Torah backwards and forwards. He can just expound on it. When, he, when, when Jesus spoke to him, he used the word Lord, and it was capitalized. He knew who he was talking to. That same Jesus that he had been pursuing to kill, to get rid of, to say, no, this is not the guy, it's not the Messiah, is the one talking to him. Well, why, why do you think they wanted to kill Paul? I'm sorry? Well, yeah, I had, I had thought, I, I, do what? It was kill him or get killed. I, I had thought about that until well, Jim kind of said it. People, yeah. what I took out of this and from the lesson wasn't the, the people that were trying to kill him were the Jews that didn't want to want Christianity. Well, they were afraid of him. Yes. So they've taken this man that is a very powerful, he's a Pharisee. Right. He knows everything there is to know about the Torah. He's highly educated. He was killing them. Now he's turned around the other way. Yeah. That's that's not good for the bad guys. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's not good for the bad guys because Paul's very powerful. Because he knows the ins and outs of it. He knows the ins and outs of it. And he's, he's very stalwart in what he's doing. The other thing is, what's Barnabas doing? People are scared to death of this man. For good reason. Yeah. For good reason. And what's Barnabas doing? Let's read, let's read verses uh, 11 in chapter 11. Can you read that, Tom? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All of it? Yeah. Okay. All of it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Before we start talking about it, we can read it. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. <clears throat> and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy <laughs> Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Because so before we jump off about Barnabas, if you notice in that in the first verses that we read, 20, verse 27, it says, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the, to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he preached boldly at Damascus in the, in the name. In, in between all of that, Barnabas spent some time in Arabia. Okay? If you look at Galatians chapter 1, 17, verse 17 and 18, he tells people that in Galatians. He didn't he did not learn what he learned from the other apostles. And there's other verses that he'll tell you that. He learned it personally from Jesus Christ himself. And that's what he says. And he spends around three years doing that, if I'm not mistaken. But that's in Galatians. Yeah, I don't know about lesson. the three years, but that's what I found when I studied. Yeah, the lesson and a couple of the commentaries I wrote talked about that three years. And I don't know whether it's true or not. They speculate that the three years he was given with Jesus in the wilderness was to match the three years the other apostles had with him. Three, three is a very significant number in the Bible for, for many obvious reasons. But that's just one of the things they said that it, there's nothing that actually says that. But if you think about it, the apostles had three years to learn under Jesus. Paul was three years in the wilderness learning under Jesus. I don't, I don't know whether I, I read it. I just, when I read it and then I reread it again, I could go back and look at the timeline. But there's a long timeline of Paul's career. And in that, in that, that initial Damascus uh, meeting, 
the time in the wilderness uh, and the other, and another span of time, it's 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 a period of around, and I said it earlier, it's a period of around ten years. And when we read it, we just it just goes. You know, we're just reading it like it's one thing right after another thing. Uh, and then there's going to be a time period that we're fixing to talk about the verses that that Tony just read. Um, was that the ones where he went to Antioch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you said you want to talk about Mormons. Oh. We haven't. We haven't done we this haven't in a while. Discussed. We haven't done this in a while. We haven't done this in a while. The uh, I don't even know where I was going. I know where. I'm... Go ahead, Lisa. Well, this thought came to me. You said Samuel didn't know the Lord, even though he was living with the priest. Okay. Saul. Did not know the Lord, but he saw the testimony of um, Stephen, and that changed his life. The priest had to tell Samuel, but Paul Saul knew who he was. So if you, it, you she does, she's doing that. See, if you look at it hard, it's very evident in the scriptures that Paul is watching. Stephen gets stoned, mm -hmm. and, the, and the way Stephen responds to the stoning, there's no way that man left that site without something going on in his heart. And, and, he, and he, runs, he runs smack dab face to face with it on the road to Damascus. And that's, to, to me, there's no, I've heard, I've heard people make comments about, oh, he really wasn't saved on the road to Damascus. I'm just telling you, I can't read it any better than that. He, he is, there is a conversion, and, and it's, it's strange how the Lord will use those type of things. Uh, one of the, you know, we're studying about mentors, and, and I, I did a little study on Barnabas. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, Barnabas, Barnabas is going to be in the scriptures for a while, and then it's, he's just gone. But at the end of the day, that man, there's no telling how many men that that man mentored and discipled? It's just there's no telling. That's what his name means. Is 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 uh, his name means encourager? Well, that's, and that's what these verses are saying here. They they sent him to Antioch, and he just brought just was bringing tons of people to the Lord to the point where it was getting out of hand for just him. So what did he do? He went to get help, and who did he go get? The guy he's been mentoring that he saw something special in. I mean, think about, think about it for a minute. Barnabas had to see something in Saul. For him to step up in front of all the other disciples and say, whoa, back off and give this guy a chance. Yeah. One, one, of the, one of the things that the lesson brought out, and I hadn't thought about that, but... You know, when Barnabas jumps in and grabs Saul and takes him to the other apostles and says, Hey, wait a minute, y'all. You're, do, you're doing what you, what you you're, you're, you're acting or you're uh, uh, reacting to him because of what you know about him. I heard him speak. It's, it's evident. And I mean, that's the kind of thing that Barnabas was telling them. So and once they, once they told him that and they grasped it, then they accepted him. So, so Barnabas is, is, has been gone now to Antioch and he's just increasing the church by leaps and bounds. And he has to go get help. So he goes and gets Saul. So what's he, from a mentor standpoint, what's he doing? He put Paul into the Saul in a position to, to start learning and then to grow. Now he's, he's bringing him into another position where he's bringing him alongside him to letting him help him grow this church and raise him up some more, grow him some more, teach him some more to get him going along his path that he's eventually going to go on. It, it's, 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 it's amazing, Brad, saying it. I'm, I'm thinking about something else in the lesson. It's amazing to see when you really get into the Bible and you start studying the people in the Bible, okay? 
So I keep telling you about these, these there's, there's years going by, okay? Well, as soon as, it, 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 you notice when the, verse, the first verse we re, I read was, once the apostles accepted accept him, what did the Jewish leaders, what, what were the Jewish leaders trying to do to him? They wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. he, he basically got the heck out of Dodge. He went to, back to Taurus. Paul, Paul did, Saul did. Barnabas is still there. Barnabas had decided to send him to Antioch, okay? Well, Paul's in Taurus, Taurus. So he goes there, and like Brad says, for some reason, let me, let me back up just a little bit. There's a reason why Barnabas was sent to Antioch. It's, it's evident, based on the, the, the opinion of this man that wrote the lesson, that when, when the Christians begin to scatter, okay, they scatter out, out of Jerusalem, out of Judea, out to the uttermost parts of the earth. So evidently there's a, a large group of, of them that went towards Antioch. And, they, and that's, a, that's a more of like a Greek area. Okay, so they're beginning to grow. The word spreading, that, that word way, <coughs> that word way is something that Christians was identified as is the way. Okay, so but the words begin to spread. So the, the, the guys, the apostles are in Jerusalem, hey, let's send Barnabas to check this out. So that's where he goes, and that, it continues. Barnabas is one thing. He's an encourager, and he's a, he's a, a teacher or instructor of the word. He's doing that. And, and as, like, like uh, Brad said, it was already pretty good size when he got there, but it was growing in leaps and bounds. Yeah, Antioch was one of the more bustling cities of the time. I mean, it was a huge commercial area. And so it's just, it's big to begin with. And as things kept growing, it just, it was just too much for one person. We, we skim across this stuff and read it, and it's, it's church in Jerusalem, it's Barnabas, and it's Saul. Somebody else was doing teaching and talking. They're just, they're not mentioned. The word's spreading like wildfire. Barnabas goes, gets Saul, brings him back with him to Antioch. And we haven't read those verses yet. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Les, can you read those? Some days after Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city which we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Hey, Les. Pause. And we're some days, I'm, I'm going to read this real slow. And for some days, Paul said to Barnabas, what happened to Saul? He became a teacher. Hmm? He became a teacher. Something else happened. A leader. <coughs> There's a name change. There's a name change. Becky's right on. He's been a teacher. Barnabas has been a teacher. Teachers become the leader, or the, the student has become the leader, and it's it's a it's a shift change right there in fifteen. And if you study those verses, all the ones that we've touched on this morning, it's a continuous Barnabas Saul, Barnabas Saul, Barnabas Saul, and in, in chapter fifteen, right here in these verses, it switches from. Paul and Paul and Barnabas. See, I don't I don't equate it to Paul becoming the master. Mm -mm. Paul became a master. Wasn't taking nothing away from Barnabas. Barnabas was still Barnabas and still doing everything he'd been doing <coughs> very well. It's just now Paul has reached a point, and you'll see him when we read the rest of the verses, he's reached a point where now he's got his own way of doing things. Shocker. Shocker. Less. And Go ahead. Barnabas determined to take him with John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed into Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren to the grace of God. I, I, I like to see, I like to see and, and, and hit on and catch similarities. Because the Bible is consistent from Genesis to Revelation. It's consistent. And if you work hard enough, if you read something in the Bible, if you'll study it 
and backtrack it, you'll prove it out. Here's the thing. Those members, the, 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 those disciples was held up in a room until Jesus showed up on the scene. And then he scattered them. You got two men, there's more than that, but two named men in the area of Antioch and Torsus. And it's Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Paul. <clears throat> and so what we're going to see, happen, what you see happen in 15 is the same similar type thing. My only thing for me when I read those verses, the first time I read them, I thought, boy, that was really, they, they were duking it out. I mean, they got hot. That's my way of thinking. Back in those days, people could actually have a discussion <laughs> and disagree with, it, with, each other, with each other and not fall out with each other. They could actually talk to each other. And so, I mean, you're looking at it too. It's, to me, it's evident. Two strong-willed people. Um, <clears throat> you just, you, if you could hear him, you heard Ron talking about Mr. Dorsey. Um, I wonder how many people, Ron alluded to thousands. I wonder how many people <clears throat> that we would mentor in our lifetime that at some point in time, they might be above you. Oh, no, that can't happen. No, that's exactly what you want to happen. Yeah. What's, you, what's Barnabas doing with, with John Mark? He's doing the exact, exact, exact same thing he did for Paul. Well, He's standing his ground and saying, I see something in this guy and it needs to be developed. There's justification for it. There's though. justification for, for, for Paul. And that's proven because... They part, but yet neither one of them loses what they believe. I mean, he takes John with him, he takes all with him. So know, what so happened? Now you've got said, two missionary teams. <laughs> Come on, baby. It said, uh, God worked other ways in this separation. God worked through these men, wasn't divided, it multiplied. God was able to mentor Simon as they traveled back to some locations on the first missionary journey. And in the new regions of Greece, and Barnabas was So, so Paul was Paul. Every, I mean, Paul was Paul. Barnabas is not talked about near as much as Paul is. I don't know, 11, 12 epistles by Paul, I don't know. Uh, but here's something to think about. The reason why Paul did not want to take John Mark or Mark was because he got out in the field with him and left. Okay. So you, you, you see two different attitudes I know, I know none of us has just give up on anybody when they just can't seem to get the job done. It's like, hey, whatever. So Get out of the way. Let me do it. Yeah, right. And so you look at Barnabas, he didn't put on Paul. He wasn't fixed to put on Mark. Mark was young. So the, so the good news is, here's the good news. Way later on than maybe Timothy, first or second Timothy, or one of the other ones, Paul, Paul writes and says, send, send somebody to me. To help me because Demas and somebody else has forsaken me. You know who he requested? Mark. Because he knew he's, he was from a distance, even though he went with Silas. And, and that's what Brad just said. Hey, it went from a two-man team to a four-man team, two two-man teams. And that's how it's supposed to work, right? right. Just so happens. <laughs> just so Exactly. James. So it's, it's the good Lord took what looked like a dissension between Barnabas and Paul and turned it into something good. He looked like he took the devil on the road to Damascus and that turned into something good yeah. too. Yeah. And that's where the people saw it when they went back to the church. That's, those guys are looking like, there's no way. We're not talking to you. You kill us. But, You're just trying to get in here and learn our secrets. <laughs> it's, just a small, it's a small lesson. As great as Paul was, he could be wrong. And yet, he like you just showed, he had, he learned from his mistake about him and, and called him later because he saw that he was better than he thought he was. Yeah, because I, I keep rallying with saying that Timothy says he is profitable for me, to me for the ministry. Right. So he, he realized eventually what he was. Paul, Paul, if if I was reading right in that letter when he when he when he asked for help, <clears throat> he was at a low state in time, and he was. I, I don't have any idea what Barnabas was doing at that time, but he knew of, I mean, Barnabas may not have been in the picture no more. I don't know. 
but I know that he requested, I think, more than, more than one person, more, more than one of them, but he did request John Mark. And the other good news is, is that the book of Mark was written by John Mark, the same Mark that, that he kicked to the curb. So it proves that part of us knew what he was doing. And you got to understand, Paul, Paul thought God was coming immediately. Right now. And he didn't have time for people who were just going to walk away. He was just, he was just that much... He was that intense about everything. He said to be done. Yeah, it's the big difference like between Barnabas and Paul. Yeah. Paul is very results oriented. And he wants to go and move. Mark, I mean, Barnabas is very patient. Okay, an encourager, very patient. Paul don't have time for that mess. You, you're either in or you're out. I got no time for nothing else. Well, Barnabas is right now as an encourager and a people person. I like what you said. <laughs> Paul is results oriented. Let's go. This guy's willing to wait, be patient, and teach. And he did the same thing. Again, <clears throat> looking at the lesson was a reminder to me how many years there are in these scriptures that we're reading. There's a lot of years. And that relationship of Barnabas and Paul lasted for a long, long time. I don't know that it ever really ended. It just ended with some contention about who they wanted to take. That's God's hand in that. It's time to split you boys up. There's, there's just more work to be done. And it just goes from Silas to Timothy. And Mark, Mark goes on to be the, the writer of the book of Mark. And it's, it's just, it's all there in everything that's done. <clears throat> everything that's done. Even though sometimes we can't see God's hand in it, it's there. The thing is, is are we willing to listen to Him? <clears throat> You know, who knows what was in Paul's mind. I, I, again, the way Brad just described it. Paul had one thing on his mind, and that was getting the word out as far as he could get it. But I do like what, one of the things that I did like about Paul is they're just, they're just ripping and running <coughs> there in Antioch. And he says, he goes and tells more and says, you know what, we need to go back and visit these other churches. In other words, it's time to go back. And it, <clears throat> golly. You read these verses and do more studies. There's, they're, they're not only going back <clears throat> to the places they've been, but they're going back and giving reports to the church too to let them know what's going on. Why was Barnabas sent out? There's something happening in Antioch. We need to know about it. So they go back. They go back more once. I don't know that... <clears throat> I don't know that Paul goes back a lot. He was too busy going instead of going back. He did go, he did go back to almost all of his churches that he settled. And there was a, a factor of trust to Paul had a relationship with Barnabas. Paul knew Barnabas. He knew who Barnabas was. So he, whenever he needed somebody, he knew because of Barnabas that he could rely on who Barnabas had taken with him and trained up. I well, mean, it, that was like their relationship. It, it, it forced them to just to do what we should be doing. Well, I think part of it, Paul, Paul grew also. Yes. Mm -hmm. He grew as he was going, yeah. and then he finally realized. Well, you, 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 you take what Danny said a minute ago. Paul Barnabas is in the maybe the middle or late middle or late stages of his ministry and Paul's just beginning. And 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 you and, and I still and I'll say that <clears throat> but his just beginning the beginning for Paul was built up over a matter of ten to twenty to fifteen to twenty years of ministry. I mean Ron taught me a long time ago you can't just look at these scriptures and think you're just moving through time. Day after day. And you're moving through time. You also, you got to think about Paul. Paul Paul was lit on fire. You ever know anybody like that? Yeah. They get saved and they just can't get enough. Just got to have it. Got to go, 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 go. And then you slowly start slowing down a little bit, right? What? And that's kind of what my was going on with Paul, too. It was go, 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 go. And he didn't have time to if I'm taking you with me, i got to know you, you've got my back and then you're gone. I ain't got time for that. So. You know, 25 to 26 was three years in just 
And just going from one verse to the next, mm -hmm. it doesn't say that, but it, that's where it goes back to the verse we're talking about, First Corinthians 13. It talks about from the time when he was in Arabia and then to the time when he went back to Jerusalem. He talks about he was three years in Galatians there in verse 18, 118. And that's where he, that's where this happened. He went from Damascus <coughs> to Arabia. And then from Arabia he went back to Jerusalem and it's talking about that in Galatians and it was a three year period. Yeah. You need to close out. Yeah, I know. I was trying to find that time frame of Paul. There's a, either I had it I got I have it in my other notes. But there's a pretty good span of time between the um, before 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 Damascus, Antioch, and end of the world, end of the world. Well, just the lesson: <coughs> be a mentor, raise your mentor up, and know when know when it's time to back off of the person who's mentoring and let them grow. Uh, Billy closes, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for us again for allowing us to get together. <coughs> Just uh, thank you for letting us come learn, study, read more, and learn more about your word. Uh, there's so much that we, that we take for granted. Uh, we appreciate you letting us get together and talk it out. We ask that you now be with the uh, preacher as he brings the sermon, be with the worship team, uh, be with the preacher as he travels this week, and most important, uh, be with the youth as they go to camp this week, dear Lord. Uh, pray that you give them each a special blessing. And bring it back uh, clearly revived. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, I thank.